You are now listening to the Be Your Own Hashtag Love Goals podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. We just want you to remember that every person, regardless of identity, wants these three things, belonging, authenticity, and love. And after a decade of partnership, we've learned to co-create these things and so much more. So from wherever you're listening, we're going to go on a journey of becoming our own hashtag love goals. Now let's get into this episode. You are now listening to the Be Your Own Hashtag Love Goals podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to let Tiffany take this episode away. (laughs) Uh, So Mo is always on me about being on my phone, whether I'm scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or even like down the TikTok rabbit hole. But what I found is that that's how I communicate with people. That's how I've begun to build community. And I've actually made a significant amount of friends through social media, I would say particularly over the last couple of years in the pandemic. And so today we just wanted to talk a little bit about social media in the context of relationship, how it impacts relationship, and then how to have boundaries around social media. Um, So yes, I'm a person that probably has my phone in my hand a lot. Yeah. (laughs) You didn't have to say so confidently. Um, And I feel like there is an added bonus of social media. I think obviously like anything, too much of it can cause um, potential negative impact, but there is a very positive use for it. And so that's the thing that I feel like I'm navigating personally. And then in the context of relationship, I think it's a thing that's ongoing, something that we talk about a lot. Um, Can I just interject you? Sure. Uh, So thank you for teeing up this episode like that. (laughs) But I think it's really honest. Yeah. I think I've had to come to realize that you see social media as a form of connection. Mm -hmm. I think that it really is and it can be a Mm -hmm. space for connection. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's hard to balance, you know, being in a relationship with someone and also... Because I am in your physical space, thinking, maybe slash wanting to be the priority of that time. Mm -hmm. But in a modern age where Mm -hmm. everybody has digital ways of Mm -hmm. connecting with one another. Mm -hmm. My question is, how do you prioritize Mm. relationships? Mm -hmm. Maybe back... 20 years ago, the default was whoever you're in physical space Mm -hmm, with, you put your mm -hmm. phone down and you be present Mm -hmm, to. mm -hmm. Do we still prioritize in the same way? Mm. If your mom, who you haven't seen or been in physical space with with for months, calls Mm -hmm. you and we're on a date, do you pick up? Mm -hmm. Because you're like, but this is my mom. I haven't seen her and physically, but I see you all the time. Is how do you manage that, that boundary? So how do you prioritize who gets your attention mm. and time when it seems like physical space is no longer like the priority? And mm-hmm. I think that in a lot of ways it can't be. So mm-hmm. how do you answer that question? Uh, well, one, I think is one that I'm figuring out, yeah. um, especially being in a space in my life where I don't live near a lot of the people in my network. Like Same. I don't live near my family. Well, Close enough, but not in the physical space. Yeah, we could not just skip to their house. No, it's it's not like Mm -hmm. that. And so I think it's something that I'm actively um, learning. As much as I hated the pandemic, I think it gave a real opportunity to understand what it's like to create connection outside of the physical when you literally couldn't see Mm -hmm. people. Um, and so I would say that the key feels like intentionality. Yeah. It feels like, okay, if I'm on a date with you, my intention is to be here and spend time with you. And while my mom may call, if I, let's say, if my intention was I'm going to sit down and have at least a two hour conversation with my mom every week, every, yeah. whatever frequency that is. And I think, it allows for the moments where, you know, it might be competing 
priorities mm-hmm. or things that are overlapping, you can easily say, well, hey, mom, I'm on a date with Mo. Yeah. Are you good? Is it anything yeah. urgent? Okay, I'll call you later. I'll call you back on yeah. this day. And not in a like robotic way, but in a way where me personally, I feel bad when those things are competing. And yeah. so when I know I have a plan yeah. or I know like, I'm going to talk to you later. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to spend time with you next time. Um, then it allows for me to have a little bit more peace about what I'm prioritizing in the moment. Okay. Well, taking it back to social media though, yeah. because I think mom is a little bit of a conflict. That was like a loose question. Yeah. When I was using your mom as an example, mm-hmm. like, do you pick up the phone mm-hmm. for her? Mm-hmm. Social media though. Yeah. Let's talk about like what it means to be prioritizing, let's say responding to your messages or mm. you know, relationships via social media. Yeah. And it could be your friends who you have like you know, in person relationship mm-hmm. with, or it could be friends that you are developing mm-hmm. connections with online. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that because yeah. I think, you know, whether you should pick up for your mom or have a relationship <laughs> with mom, that's gonna always be yeah. a priority. So right. it's a little easy to yeah to get down Mm -hmm. but how do like let's say in a relationship Mm -hmm. how are you navigating deciding when you should pick up your phone or when not and i'm really curious of course Mm. i am always like annoying you with my why you just so busy i i start the comment like Mm -hmm. you're just so busy yes (laughs) (laughs) so i feel like this is a, a a growing edge for me mm-hmm. because I do find myself like down the TikTok rabbit hole, for instance, and I'm like, okay, I've 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 spent enough time here to the point where Nova knows the music. Yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> so she tells me basically when Nova knows music, I'm like, oh, Tiffany's been really at the TikTok again. <laughs> basically, <laughs> um, don't let her start knowing the dances. That's a whole other thing. But anyway, um. I feel like it's a thing that I am actively trying to learn how to navigate. I think that there has to be um, dedicated time to social media. And for me, you know, having my own personal social media account, um, working with our uh, podcast social media mm-hmm. account, your social media account, creating content, all of these things, a lot of it requires being on social media. It yeah. requires engaging. It requires, you know, talking back to followers and things right. like that. So I think that in my head, what makes sense is a separation of like when you're, I don't want to call it working because it's not necessarily working, but it is like, the groundwork necessary for those accounts that you own so like creating the time for that and then maybe creating time more for like leisurely pleasure and it can't be just this unprescribed amount of time yeah i completely agree with that i think you're getting at how important it is that we become more and more Mm -hmm, organized mm -hmm. and structured around our time Mm -hmm. now that we have more things that can take away our time and we're not realizing it. So before it was just our jobs and you didn't have work-life balance. Now we have to have work, uh, family, Mm -hmm. social media, Mm -hmm. long distance friendship, every other Mm -hmm. kind of balance Mm -hmm. in order to be able to function and so it's a lot and it can be a lot Mm -hmm. before we know it yeah before we know it we have all of these things competing for Mm -hmm. our time Mm -hmm. and our attention and then we're in a relationship so um it's important to really be talking intentionally Mm -hmm. about okay we're planning content together on sunday we're gonna be i respond to my messages at the top of the day and at the end Mm -hmm. of the day whatever your schedule Mm -hmm. is so that so that there are expectations in your right. relationship right. around when when around when I can actually have your attention, mm-hmm. what's reasonable, what's mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Um, because mm-hmm. whenever your Nova goes to sleep, mm-hmm. my inclination is to want your yeah. your time and attention. Mm-hmm. Unless it's in that twenty minutes where you like this is Tiffany time. <laughs> You yes. get that 20 minutes. And after 20, 20 minutes, minutes, I am like, hello, mm-hmm. favorite person I have not seen today. <laughs> and you're like, 
deep into posting something yeah. and I'm like, hello, mm-hmm. favorite mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I'm like, you are just so busy. Mm-hmm. I think you're getting into something that I haven't quite instituted, but I know would be helpful is you know, related to social media, more planning. Yeah. Um, because oftentimes, like you're saying, I'll take this 20 minutes and then I'm like, oh, I want to make a post. And making a post, like, it doesn't have to take a long time. But when you think about if nothing is together, you don't have a caption, you don't have hashtags, yeah. like any of these things, it could easily take you a good bit of time. Mm-hmm. And so if I were to spend more time, let's say on Sunday, mm-hmm. where I'm like, these are my posts for the week schedule them that would be great yeah um and have this stuff kind of outlined it would just be the click of a button yeah. to make sure that it's ready to go and so it's it's the thing i haven't really done um shout out to my social media coach who really encourages us to do that she tells us not to spend more than an hour um engaging you know in the work mode of yeah. social media per day um yeah. and it's a, you know she she is a person that very much cares about balance and self-care yeah have I listened to her um, 100%? No. And so it's a thing I really have to focus in on yeah. because I think that it will then allow that time yeah. to be freed up. Yeah, I'm going to be like, Alicia said no more than an <laughs> hour on that. So yeah, shout out to Alicia. She's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. Mm-hmm. And I think because our challenges are different challenges, mm-hmm. like you are in the engaging a yeah. lot and the creation of content feels like it's quick for you. Mm-hmm. Whereas for me, it feels like it takes me hours mm. to do anything yeah. I'm trying to do on social mm-hmm. media. Mm-hmm. Like if I want to make a post mm-hmm. or if I want to make a video mm-hmm. and they could be because I'm a perfectionist and then I got to edit it and I got to do all of these yeah. things. It feels like it takes me a considerable mm-hmm. amount of time. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to structure that time into my work yeah. day. And so gratefully, I mean, like, thankfully we have the, like, mm-hmm. flex- the flexibility to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does feel like quite often mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I'm not able to put the time in my schedule that mm-hmm. I want to be in the schedule to edit content, create things. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed how I've been very focused on the creation of content in relationship to social media. And Tiffany has been very focused on relationship. And I, I think that that's interesting mm. that my relationship to social media has been so much centered around like uh, doing, mm. just like so masculine, right? And <laughs> Tiffany is like, I'm in the being of social media, like the engaging with people and like, connecting. Yeah. And I feel like I love that thing, that too. And I think that if I were to lean into that more, it might change my relationship. Mm-hmm. We might be sitting next to each other like, <laughs> they said this funny thing. <laughs> Ooh, I love our social media friends. Oh, that's a dream. That's yeah. A dream. yeah. That's a dream of yours for us to be sitting there Just like up. on TikTok. It's like how I send you probably like 10 TikToks in a row. To and I like, never look at them. And I'll be like, did you look at the TikTok I sent you? What TikTok? Bro, I sent it to you like... 30 minutes ago. And then I go into my TikTok and there are like seven, eight things she wants me to laugh at. Nice. It's weird that you she know just wants to be watch funny me laugh. Mode. No, they are funny. Yeah. They're, I mean, people on social media are hilarious. Hilarious. I just, um, yeah. I just noticed that you are very into the social part. And yeah. A lot of what I've been talking about here <laughs> has been the content part, which is like very much how we operate in our relationship. Yeah. Um, but, but that could be taken away from my appreciation of what the time you put right. into it so when i so i guess like shifting even a little bit thinking about the content part of it especially in the context of a relationship like whatever dynamic your relationship might be when you think about the content and what you create and what you share do you feel like you have uh standards or boundaries around what you share i guess on a personal note yeah and then relationship, no. And then I guess you can even expand it out to family, you know, having kids. Like, what does the content creation and content sharing look like that's respectful yeah. of your relationship? See, I think this is a good question because there's a line between being authentic and their and like oversharing. Mm. So I am always trying to assess where that boundary is for mm. me. And it might shift over time, mm-hmm. but you're probably not going to find, and I'm 
I have to preface this because I really, I think that there's a line between being protective of your boundaries and also curating perfect for social media. Mm. I am never trying to only show yeah. when things are good or mm-hmm. positivity. Mm-hmm. And so I do share challenges in mm-hmm. that happen in my life, mm-hmm. like um, challenges around uh, gender transition. Mm-hmm. We talk about the different things we've, we've been challenged with mm-hmm. in our relationship, mm-hmm. but what you will not find me doing is if I'm having a difficulty with Tiffany uh, coming on social media to rant about it or yeah. to post subliminal messages Mm-mm. on my story Mm-mm. for Tiffany to decipher. Like, I'm not going to do that. Mm-mm. Or, you know, you're not going to see me if I'm having a conflict with a friend posting memes about how people don't treat you right. So that's why you got to just focus on you. <laughs> no. I'm not going to do that. No. So those are my boundaries. I'm never curating my content to look perfect mm-hmm. because I don't want anybody to think that my life is easy because mm-hmm. I want y'all to know when I make it, baby, mm-hmm. I work for it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, and I want to know that for myself, mm-hmm. but I do not like the idea of putting when you're in a moment where you're not even thinking right, yeah. you haven't even processed something, you're putting that out mm-hmm. there. And then, so you're responsible for the impact yes. of that. Yes. So I like to just be responsible, I should say. Yeah. So that's my initial thought. I would love to hear your initial thoughts. I, I have more to yeah. say, but I want to hand it back to you. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I feel like similarly, I'm not, I'm just not into that, like, airing that sort of thing out on social media. I feel like there's a place to address that. And me personally, I don't feel like that's on social media. If you're sitting right next to me or it's a friend I can pick up the phone and call, I'm, I am just not going to take that to social media personally. Take what? Any like subliminal messaging or uh, rants about how, you might have irritated me this morning. Like, I'm just not going to do that. I do feel like there are opportunities to share maybe um, challenges in your relationship, how you overcame them in a way that feels respectful to all parties involved. Yeah, and that's why overcame is the operative word because when you're just in the process of a thing and you haven't figured it out and you don't really know what it is and you don't know all of the Mm -hmm. parts that you're responsible Mm -hmm. for, you're putting it out there prematurely, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. And you may not want what comes back. So you might not Mm -hmm. want the advice that comes back. You might not want people judging you. I was going to say that I used to find myself, uh, let's say if I'm in a particular experience, like in a marriage or in motherhood or any sort of relationship that's traditionally seen as one way. So let's say um, people you always see content of like, oh my God, motherhood is so hard. It's so draining. It's so tiring. It's so things that aren't necessarily um, positive or maybe align with where I am. I used to think or feel as if I had to create content that was reflective of those feelings. And so Mm -hmm. I feel like I've grown to a place where I honor like if, you know, I really enjoy, let's say, pool day with my kid that I'm going to talk about how, for me, motherhood can be joyful and all of these yeah. little moments can bring a lot of joy. And I feel like the same in a marriage or in a any sort of relationship, dating yeah. or not. And so I feel like I often challenge myself, even if my feeling or my perspective or my story feels different than what's presented on social media that I want my content to be reflective of how I feel. And that's how I feel like I maintain authenticity or try to maintain authenticity in what I share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that authenticity also has to be, it has to come with integrity. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah, I think you're getting Mm -hmm. at what it's like to be in a world where yeah. there can be so many suggestions around what mm-hmm. your what your sharing should look like right. um and what 
in how you build community. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to build community around mothers who are like, yeah. I'm just so tired of being a mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a different kind of, right. you know, share. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you really do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not making anybody sad mm -hmm. because you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many people that might not want to share their joy exactly. because they're like, well, other people are grieving. Mm -hmm. Am I going to look boastful mm -hmm. or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've definitely felt that mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's really important for anybody to. Yeah, just keep sharing what's right. important to you. Right. I want to go back, though, mm -hmm. to us talking about what's appropriate to share. Mm -hmm. Especially as people in a relationship. Yeah. Mm. You asked What's me appropriate how. for your relationship boundary for, yeah. you know. Well, I feel like it has to be shared. So. Like what? Whatever your. Your decision to share something. Your needs decision to, be to share something needs to be mutual. What you share, the extent of what you share should be an agreed upon thing between all parties involved. Right. Now, I can't expressly say what that looks like for another person, but I know that I feel like conversations should be had about, you know, are we going to talk about this aspect of our relationship? Are we going to share it on social media? Are we going to share it, you know, in whatever time frame? Let's say you were expecting, right? Right. And... It's something you just don't want to publicize on social media right now. Yeah. You have to be on the same page expecting about like a baby, like expecting a baby, expect, yeah. you know, expanding your family in some way. And it's something that you don't want to share immediately talking about when, mm -hmm. how you're going to do it, like mm -hmm. what language you're going to use to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that for one, you have to, have a mutual understanding about what that's going to look like. Yeah. Um, I think additionally with what you share, like you were saying, it's not like just curating like this perfect relationship or this right. perfect example of relationship, but it is for me, I feel like sharing the real yeah. sharing, like, the everyday stuff of your relationship to the extent that you want to share it. So I can't go specifically as to like yeah. every example, but it feels like a mutual understanding and then sharing the real, real. Yeah. 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 What about you? You know, it's interesting because first always be your own love goals. Own That's love like goals. number one. Mm -hmm. All of our advice this is all a suggestion, right? Mm -hmm, like you don't mm -hmm. have to take it. But it's interesting because like, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking these were all individuals before they got into a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a joint page, do you need to be um, hmm. holding back? Let's say we are, like I said earlier, like I would not be sitting there making posts that are like, all I wanted was a wife that would um, love on me and respect me. And I just didn't get that. <laughs> I would never post something like that if I was mad at Tiffany. Now, I've seen people do this, yeah. right? Yeah, I've seen it. And that's their individual pay. So mm -hmm. some part of me is like, well, let me take a step back. Mm -hmm. Because that's not something I would do. Mm -hmm. Let me think objectively. If mm -hmm. it's somebody's individual page and they don't have a mutual page, mm -hmm. is it their relationship? Is it, is it, do they need to have a mutual agreement about their individual page yeah. and what they share? Yeah. My inclination with this question, mm -hmm. you know what? No, I'm going to let you answer this first. Because I really want to hear what you say before I give my opinion. Ask the question again because I'm, I'm, if it's their individual page, yeah. do they need to make that a mutual agreement? Like what they would say? Ooh, that's tricky. I mean, technically, is their account, is their page. Yeah. Free will. Free will. You get to share what you want to share. Consequences. Cons your actions <laughs> have consequences, though. And I personally feel like 
we getting into respect territory yeah. depending on what you share. I wouldn't do that to you. I'm glad to know. <laughs> so I'll tell you to your face. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if y'all can see my face for the people that's listening to this podcast. Uh, but anyway, I think, um, yeah, technically, if it's your own page, you get to share whatever you want. Yeah. I do feel like your actions have consequences Absolutely. and that it gets into respect. Yeah. However, as we always say, be your own love goals. That is up to you and your dynamic and your relationship, what respect mm-hmm. looks like, how you share it, mm-hmm. what you share, what you don't share. Mm-hmm. As for me and my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we not operating like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, you know, I agree. I think <laughs> it's a little, it's a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Imagine being out with a couple mm-hmm. at a restaurant, mm-hmm. and they're going through something. Yeah. And instead of outrightly saying they're going through something, they start just being negative, like mm. jabbing at one each other. I would rather just know y'all are in the middle of an argument yeah, and so let awkward. the argument play out, it's awkward. versus being like, because somebody don't know how to pick up their phone when I call. <laughs> That's uncomfortable versus being like, I am so upset with her right now. Yeah. Like, it's just awkward turtles. <laughs> I, you know, I won't pivot us too much, but I feel like the it feels as if, in this example, if you're out with a couple at dinner and they aren't directly addressing what's happening, it feels like a lack of vulnerability. It feels like yeah. a lack of vulnerability with one another. Yeah. And then potentially the people that you're around. Yeah. You know, like whether you want to share that or not, but then to share it and it's not direct, it's still kind of awkward and you're yeah. still sharing it. It's- so it's like for social media, <laughs> we're the, your audience is that other person that's at dinner with yes. you. It's like... Just tell us y'all are going through a difficult oh time. God, please make make that your post, but don't like subtweet each other or your friends or anybody. Tr- I've seen people Ugh. that work with like that have clients in whatever industry they're mm-hmm. in and talk about their clients online. Yes, yes, I've seen it. Or make these posts about like. If you come, don't do such and such when you get in my office. What? Why would you post that? I know. That sounds like an email that needs to be sent mm-hmm. to individual people mm-hmm. or from your professional email yeah. channel. Why mm-hmm. do we use our social media like as a broadcast channel yes. for your grievances? It's, yes. it's to me, it's impersonal. Like Very. it is not get to connection it's like you're afraid to actually stand up for yourself so you're saying this passive aggressively mm-hmm. through social media where you're hoping somebody will see it and it dishonors What's the, point? the relationship it dishonors mm-hmm. the relationship you have with mm-hmm. your clients mm-hmm. with those individual people mm-hmm. with your partner whoever you're doing it about oh my god it's just so awkward <laughs> it's so i'm i'd be hella uncomfortable imagine <laughs> subtweeting your boss and then your boss sees it it's just like, ooh, it's like, I just want to cover my eyes. Like, I didn't see that. And then additionally, you have, you also have to be aware that there are people, there are a lot of investigators on social media. Yeah. So if you start subtweeting. Investigators. Or people that. Explain investigator. <laughs> now I'm curious. I'm like. People that pick up on subtweets. Yeah. Like say. Oh, you mean like nosy neighbors. Right. And yeah. I can be one of those. I'm about to say Tiffany. Come on, man. There are a lot of Tiffany's on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. If you're beefing with your partner or somebody else and you're, you know, throwing out subliminal messages or whatever the case might be, I feel like there's people who can pick up on that and then they gonna start digging. Digging or DMing. <laughs> hey big. Digging. How y'all doing? Digging. The second you delete those people's pictures oh off gosh. your page, they look and they know. You know how? Because they end up in, in session with me being like, someone saw those pictures was deleted. So I don't know. Maybe there's exactly. an opportunity. Exactly. And so I just beware. Like, just be mindful of things like that. Because ultimately, it's a public display of your relationship in whatever light and people there are people who will prey on that yeah absolutely so if you're not really done done <laughs> be, 
Just don't we say are nothing. so good. We are in the best place ever. Yes. Or else you get the hey big heads at oh three a.m. You know, and oh you don't God. want that. Yeah, you, you really don't want that. Really you don't, don't. want to open up your relationship for any kind of judgment, criticism, um, uh, to be a target to that because people are already out here trolling mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. And so, if you haven't processed something or thought through something mm-hmm. or mutually agreed upon sharing something it can be better to just keep it to yourself if it's something that's Mm -hmm, testy. mm -hmm. I have other boundaries too Mm. that I know we've talked about. Like, you know, when we had Nova, we had to talk about like whether or not Mm -hmm. we wanted to share a lot of her life as she's developed. Mm -hmm. And I've been honored, you know, that people have felt like we've shared her a lot, shared more of her world a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we've been really protective. Like we, you know, wanted her to have her independence to say Mm -hmm. what she wants to share Mm -hmm. or what she wants to be recorded Mm -hmm. and so we kind of let her lead that um as a little baby she's very um nice to the camera yeah so if ever you know she was having a difficult time we would just stop recording Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be anything to Mm -hmm. record Mm -hmm. but most of the time she was excited to see the camera Mm -hmm. and like she was comfortable with that Mm -hmm. Um, so that made it easier, but mm-hmm. we are still really protective of yeah. Nova's privacy. Mm-hmm. And so there are a lot of developmental things we don't talk about yeah. or, um, developmental milestones, I should mm-hmm. say. So like if she's potty training, it's not something we're going to put mm-hmm. on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, there are just things that are private to her yeah. person. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, you just don't want everybody to know every single mm-hmm. thing unless you have a personal relationship. Right. So we have those different boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it also helps us to have what's ours in our relationship and yeah. so it's not just everybody's mm-hmm. i mean i'm open to being an open book yeah. um but there are just things that i feel like should be sacred to your relationship mm-hmm. and so for me my growing edges and tiffany's growing ed- edges are sacred to me for our relationship yeah. So, like, I would never try to embarrass my partner Mm -hmm. in the ways that she has to grow. And I know that she will always honor Mm -hmm. the ways that I have to grow with that kind of privacy Mm -hmm. to work through it. And then we come on here and tell y'all all all about it. I love it. Y'all get all the tea. Okay. (laughs) I have a hard head. Oh, my. Okay. So, it takes me a long time to learn stuff. But Tiffany never puts me out there. Mm -mm. She allows me to grow through that expand Mm -hmm. and get to the other side to say you know what Mm -hmm. let me tell you all what i learned Mm -hmm. right and i think that that is Mm -hmm. that allows us to keep growing together Mm -hmm. and i think there is a way to keep growing together with social media i think that's the point of this episode there just probably have to be a lot of conversations Mm -hmm. to navigate priorities yes um it sounds like and then navigate mutually navigate Mm -hmm. what we're sharing on social media absolutely i i 100 agree with you and i will just add um the safety piece of it something that i've more recently done is you know on stories you can just be in real time like oh look at me i'm at this cute coffee shop and this could be a little extreme or it could not be but i don't i no longer post in real time where i am yeah i mean i'm not like this international pop star however i feel like it's just it's a level of accessibility that i just don't really want so i'm not gonna be like oh my gosh i'm at this coffee shop on the corner of maple and green street yeah at the same time i am i might post about it like two hours later when i'm already done or sometimes i'm if it's a place i frequent a lot i'm just not gonna talk about it at all <laughs> i'm not it yeah. could be a little bit extreme i'm not judging anyone it's who does definitely that definitely not extreme yeah i don't i don't judge yourself when yeah. you're thinking about your own privacy mm-hmm. and your own needs for safety yeah. i wouldn't i don't want anybody mm-hmm. man woman child non-binary mm-hmm. trans however you identify i don't want you to judge yourself mm-hmm. around safety because mm-hmm. you have to do what feels mm-hmm. good for you mm-hmm. So I'm just going to stop you there for yeah. uh, just want you to encourage you that it's yeah. okay to have your own boundaries around mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I was, that's just the additional piece I was going to add. Yeah. And so I do feel like there's lots of opportunity um, to grow in relationship and social media. I feel like there's ways to make friends, yeah. you know, personally. We've been experiencing as a that a lot more. I have. We've got more social media friends. Woo-hoo. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm actually in the process of cultivating an intentional long distance friendship with a person. Um, and it's great. What was the whole face about? Because it's like, it's a new experience. You know, um, you're not in the vulnerability of it. So you're making faces at yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the vulnerability of it. I How was do you definitely feel about that? cringing when I was like, okay, so I really like you as a person and I really want to be your friend. Um, and they responded and they were like, oh my God, I want to be your friend too. It, it took was you like, back to the sandbox. It was like, yes or no, do you want to be my friend? And so we've been exchanging messages. And you all met on social media. We did. And what I really love about just even our back and forth so far is that like, even in the, the the short exchange of messages we've had, we understand like this is how we like to communicate. We like voice recordings or we don't like voice recordings, right? <laughs> and it. then additional pieces like, okay, I responded to you 24 hours later. This is normal. My yeah. life is very busy. It's no reflection of you. Like this is a normal cadence. And yeah. I'm like, me too, girl. We yeah. on the same page. We see each, we other. See each other. So that level of like, this is what it is. This is what you're going to get. It allows for like transparency and I love it. What's it's, her zodiac sign? She's a Scorpio. Beautiful. Shout out to the water signs, period. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I can go on and on about that. But I just wanted to share that um, I'm in an intentional place in my life in general, but particularly using social media in a way that can create community. Yeah, you're integrating social media yeah. into your life. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. I love that for you. I love that for us, my way of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Hilarious. I'm thinking this last thing that's coming up mm -hmm. for me about social media is that from time to time, I find myself like tired of it and mm. I end up having to take breaks. Mm. And I know that that's something that has been very mm. helpful, but yeah. I wish I was more intentional with. Yeah. So as I think about how to integrate social mm -hmm. media into my life and then also integrate, you know, mm -hmm. relate new relationships yeah. via social media into my life mm -hmm. as they support this relationship yeah. that I'm in and vice versa, mm -hmm. that breaks feel like they are mm -hmm. important, but I need to do it in an intentional way. Right. And I just get so tired of social media. And y'all haven't heard from me, right. especially from my friends that are long distance yeah. um, or I, the friends I'm yeah. cultivating. I think the breaks are important. And for me, I think, you know, I saw this woman recently. She was like, I don't get on social media before nine o'clock a.m. Mm. And I am off of it by 9 p.m. Mm. And I was like, hmm, because I've often thought, like, do I just need to take breaks more frequently to yeah. be able to recharge? Yeah. And, you know, I feel like that could be an approach. And yeah. another approach is my daily practice with yeah. it. If yeah. I set this window where the yeah. first thing I do is not going to be to scroll on Instagram. Yeah. And I'm guilty of having done yeah. that. See, what I love, I love that you're saying this because yeah. what I noticed myself doing about a year ago, yeah. it was a time period where I was doing a lot of quotes every mm. day. The thing I would do in the morning was channel my divinity, yeah. hear some inspiration, yeah. make a quote, mm -hmm. post it, and then I was off. Mm -hmm. I wasn't spending more time than that. I was mm -hmm. coming back maybe in the evening mm -hmm. to share something else, to mm -hmm. look at posts. Mm -hmm. But that was like my daily mm -hmm. practice. And I actually wasn't scrolling. Mm -hmm. I was like making it like was very intentional. quote of the day. And was, those quotes was popping. Can you get back to that? <laughs> I will certainly share some more quotes. <laughs> <That> <laughs> Start doing good. But yeah. It was such a good, it's mm -hmm. like journaling in the mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to intentionally use yep. social media. Yep. Um, and infuse it into mm -hmm. your your daily practice, yeah. like you're saying, yeah. so that it doesn't interrupt or disrupt mm -hmm. what you have going. It mm -hmm. almost, it uplifted me to make yeah. those quotes. And so if you are going to scroll, be intentional. Yeah. Go to that page that you know has that mm -hmm. good source of wisdom to start yes. your day. Yes, absolutely. I can name like three or four pages right now you should start your day with. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. If you start with those pages, then mm -hmm. maybe you're integrating social media in a way that's helpful to your day, your day, mm -hmm. your life, your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, there might even be ways, like we were saying, mm -hmm. scrolling on TikTok together, looking at videos together mm -hmm. on a Friday evening mm -hmm. could be a part of your mm -hmm. date. Mm -hmm. 
seriously yeah can, they can spark a lot of conversation listening to this podcast on a friday evening because <clears throat> it comes out on friday at 3 a.m yes that is a great it's a great date night and then you can have a conversation about <laughs> yeah. it once you watch mm -hmm. wouldn't that be cute you watch mm -hmm. it during the day and then you debrief on friday evenings yeah. okay what did they talk about today mm -hmm. That's like wishful thinking. And you can, that you can take it a step further and give us a little review on your story or whatever you want to do on your social media. <laughs> right. This is a shameless plug right now. This is wishful thinking that you all would go that far. We love y'all for listening and watching. Though. We really do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're we're good here. I just yeah. want to pause us here. Yeah. Uh, this has been Be Your Own Love Goals. I'm sorry. I'm going to start this over again. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I wasn't even looking at the right camera. Um, this has been Be Your Own Love Goes Podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. Thank you all so much for joining us. Stay tuned. Bye. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Video episodes are on YouTube and Spotify. If you want your question included in an upcoming episode, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Be Your Own Love Goals or check out our website at lovegoespodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.